Well, hello and welcome back to another video. This is Chris with CJ Healthy Life and I'm happy you're here today. I'd like to talk about something that is, I would say, near and dear to my heart and that is Egypt, uh, the country of Egypt. Ever since I was a little boy, I always thought about uh, how fascinating and how uh, just how wonderful it would be to be able to visit there. And so a few years back, I had the opportunity to travel to Egypt on a short vacation and since have been back uh, twice after that so uh, three trips to Egypt but my first trip was it was really short um, I flew over took a kind of a long four-day weekend and just went over there and saw the pyramids and came right back what I what I experienced on that first trip was was really fascinating I can remember being picked up at the airport. I stayed at a place called the Guardian Guest House. And I've got a video on the YouTube channel about the guest house and the surrounding areas if you're interested in checking that out. But the hotel, they picked me up uh, when I got into the airport. I uh, paid the 25 US dollars for my visa, stamped that in the passport. And it was a, it was a great, oh, probably 30, 40 minute ride from the airport out to the uh, Giza area, which is where the pyramids are located. And I arrived there, it was not real late at night, but, but at night and it was dark. I went into the, checked into the hotel. I believe my room was on the third floor and I walked over to the, uh, the windows and, and I pulled back the curtains and, and right there, you know, the, I could see the silhouette of the, the primary, the, the three pyramids there. And honestly, I got just a little bit of a tear in my eye. It was just such an overwhelming thing. And I think it was because I had thought about that a lot for most of my life. And after all those years, here I was in Egypt, right at the Giza Plateau, looking at uh, these magnificent structures that have stood there for thousands and thousands of years and it was just a it was it was just a wonderful moment so the next day i i got up early uh, went over to the ticket office uh, bought a ticket into the plateau and on that first trip i i remember i had a guide because i i didn't know my way around and so I hired a gentleman that the hotel had recommended and he took me around. And as soon as we walked through the ticket booth and got into the main uh, pyramid complex, he, he just started, you know, giving me a lot of facts and history and theories and about the history of Egypt, the history of the pyramids, maybe how they were built. And I, I, I just, I had to stop him because it, it went on for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And I was just trying to take in the experience and I I just stopped him and I said, sir, you are doing a great job, but if you don't mind, could we just, I really don't want to talk. I just want to take this all in and experience it. And he said, oh yeah, sure, no problem. I just, I just want you to be happy and you know, I want to do a good job for you, which he did. So walked around the three main periods pyramids and when you look at the uh, pyramids in a lot of photos you'll see the one in the middle which in a lot of photographs looks like the biggest or looks like the tallest <clears throat> and a lot of people mistake that for the the great pyramid uh, that pyramid is named Khafre and if you look at the top of it you can see the top of it looks finished and then it kind of jets in a little bit and comes back down. So the casing stones at the top of Khafre are there. And the way the plateau is set, a lot of photos make that one look like the tallest. But it's actually Khufu, which uh, in a lot of photographs is the one on the right, which is which is the Great Pyramid. And then you have Menkari, the smaller, the third one. And there's actually nine pyramids on the Giza Plateau, but for the most part in the photos, you just see three of them. Those are the uh, predominant structures. But anyway, I was just uh, enjoying myself so much and amazed. And uh, we walked around and 
uh, it, it was fascinating. So I got up the next morning and I decided, well, I kind of know what to do and where to go. So I'll just go in by myself this time. And uh, I had met another tour guide on that trip. And I said, I would really like to get into that Great Pyramid uh, before it opens up to the public. Is there any way that that's possible? And he said, well, yeah, I might. Uh, I, I know one of the security guards that works there. And he said, you know, for maybe another, you know, 30 or $40, we'll kind of tip the guy and maybe he can, maybe he'll let you in. I said, okay, well, let's go over there in the morning. And I think, I think it opened at eight or 8.30 in the morning for general public ticket holders. So we went over maybe 45 minutes early and uh, sure enough, he went up to his guard and and it, it ended up being about 40 US dollars that I paid. But it, it was worth it. I, I went in, I went inside the Great Pyramid all by myself. There was nobody else in there. And I just thought about all the history that surrounded that country. Not only the biblical history, but the all the over over the years, all the explorers and world leaders and people that have come across that part of the world and seen those pyramids for the first time and just were were blown away and it was a, a fascinating experience so i i he he let me in and he said well how much time you need i said well i'd, I'd like it you know i'd like about 30 minutes in in here if i can and they said okay so i if you've ever been inside the great pyramid you kind of you kind of walk in through a passageway it's kind of a a winding path that they've chiseled out when the, when they discovered the the inner chambers they actually chiseled out some of the outside stone into where the main passageways are and then there's a series of uh, tunnels if you will or shafts and they've got some steps and, and the first shaft is pretty long I forget maybe it's about 120 feet long but you actually have to stoop way over not necessarily crawling but you kind of do a Kind of do like a duck walk through there, just crunch down real low. And then you, you get into a section called the, the Grand Gallery. And I stopped in the Grand Gallery and just looked at the magnificent construction and, and was really awestruck at that, thinking how were these created? And, uh, you know, you hear all these theories about it, it came from this or it came from that or, may, you know, maybe some aliens did it, which I don't, uh, I wouldn't uh, agree to that. But I want to give you my theory in just a minute on what I think could be the, uh, the origin of the Great Pyramid. And we'll just see what you think. But I continued on and I went up through, the, through that grand gallery and then you go through a section where you have to stoop down real low before you enter the king's chambers, almost like bowing down. And you go through a short shaft and then there's the king's chamber. And inside the king's chamber is a sarcophagus. It's a red granite sarcophagus. And uh, strikingly, as many hieroglyphs and inscriptions and, and all the things that you see, all the paintings, the uh, character caricatures, uh, in all the buildings in Egypt and ancient ruins and tombs, when they went inside the Great Pyramid for the first time, there was no names written. There were no hieroglyphs. There was nothing, just empty. And literally, it was an empty tomb. There wasn't even a body found in the sarcophagus. But really, just really fascinating. So I spent some time in that room, in that king's chamber, and uh, it may sound a little strange, but I actually took the time to walk around the perimeter of the room with my hand touching each stone around the perimeter of that rectangular room. And then I actually laid down <laughs> inside that sarcophagus and just stared up at the ceiling. And I laid there for probably five or 10 minutes. And I, I took that time for a time of prayer. And I just praised the Lord Jesus for what he had done and is doing in my life and the opportunity that I had to be there in that special place uh, in this world and just what a magnificent place. And as I think about 
how those were created. Oh, and, an and I think another point needs to be made. When you look at the Great Pyramid, Khufu, in comparison to the others on that plateau, the, the design and the intricacy and the precision of the stones and how they're aligned and the size of the stones is just incomparable to the others. And so it's obvious to me, and I believe many others, that Pyramid Khufu looks like it would have been created first and the others would have been copies or replicas of that. Um, so when I think about the creation, I think about how could something have been created that precise? And then when I think about our world and our human bodies, and I'm sitting here in a park right now and I'm looking at these trees and the flowers and just a beautiful landscape, uh, all of this looks to a creator. And I want to read just a little bit out of uh, Genesis chapter 1 as a reminder of giving credit to the Lord God. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. I, now, I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I would, I would just uh, suggest that you might get your Bible out today or look it up online and look at the book of Genesis, because there's a lot of people that would hold uh, an atheistic view and there's even some uh, people in other religions that just feel like this world just happened by almost almost as if nature created itself over an eternity of eternities, if you will. But it's quite clear here that there was a beginning and God created this. And, you know, I want to give you just a theory. I would never want to get up and be dogmatic about preaching this. But in terms of where the pyramid, specifically the Great Pyramid, because of its precise structure, its uh, geographical and astronomical and its uh, mathematical precision as far as it aligns with the stars, the solar system, the height, the uh, just the weight of the blocks, everything is so fascinating. In the book of Isaiah, in the 19th chapter, the 19th verse says, In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they will cry out to the Lord because of the oppressors and he will send them a savior and a mighty one and he will deliver them. So uh, it doesn't say that God set the pyramid in Egypt. But I certainly think it's a plausible explanation. Certainly, if you believe that God, by the power of his voice, said, let there be, and the universe, and the light, and all that we have came into existence from nothing. It, was, it would not be inconceivable then to think that, could God have set the Great Pyramid there? Well, I believe that's true. I believe, well, I, I'm not saying it's true, but I'm saying it's plausible, it's possible, and it's not out of the realm of possibility. Because if he could create all of this, then setting a bunch of precise stones stacked up in place there as a testimony to his power and magnificent would not be out of the realm of possibility. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like you to think about uh, the book of Genesis, the creation, the the pyramid, that great pyramid in Egypt that I've been privileged to see. Then on my second trip back, again, I went in there a uh, second time. And then the third time, I went back in it again. Uh, but this time, you know, just with the, with, with the public at that time. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too crowded, and it, it was nice. But that first visit was really special. And I do have a couple videos on the YouTube channel about my trips to Egypt. Uh, such a such a fascinating place and so wanted to share that with you today I'm going to flip back to the New Testament here and let me see if I can find it 
uh, Galatians chapter 3, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter 4, verse 16 says, Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Um, <laughs> certainly, there are a lot of people proclaiming uh, different things in, the, in life, different religions and different philosophies. But I just, I wanted to take this opportunity today to proclaim once again that I believe the Lord God created the heavens and the earth and he created you and I, and he has a desire to have a relationship with us. And he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus came in the form of a man but was, and was truly man, but was fully God and fully man. And Jesus, the only God man, if you will, and Jesus came for that specific purpose and uh, by obedience laid his life down for a sacrifice for the sin of you and the sin of myself that we might be redeemed and brought back and regenerated into a right relationship with the Lord God, our creator. So if you find yourself today and you are searching and you're looking for answers, I hope this has been an encouragement to you Again, don't get me wrong. I don't take my uh, my theory on the pyramid as gospel truth. It's just a thought. But when I look at the pyramid, I don't look at some, uh, you know, mystical uh, alien created thing, or I don't look at it as a, it's some big mystery. And I surely don't give man the credit, but I would like to give God the credit for doing amazing things in our in our earth. And in our in our life all right i think i'm going to turn this video off uh maybe take a walk in the park today it's a little hot but uh the sun is shining and i just thank you for being here friend and uh staying with us this long um if you'd like uh hit the subscribe button and like if you if you want uh, again it's free if you don't like it hey it hasn't cost you anything and if you have any comments I would like to hear maybe your thoughts on creation, the pyramids, the wonders of the world, uh, anything that you're interested in, and I'd like to uh, hear your feedback. All right, you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. God bless you.